Ms. Jay, good evening. Welcome to the Muskogee Creek National Council planning session. Today is Tuesday, June 13, 2023. The time is now 6.54 p.m. My name is Speaker William Lowe and I call this meeting to order. At this time, I would like to ask Representative Daryl Proctor to say our invocation, please. Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, uh, thank you for this day and allowing us to be here today. Hey, Lord, uh, if you let this be your guidance today, Lord, and if we do our nation today, may we learn from you. Blessings. This tribe and nation. Amen. Middle Representative Proctor, roll call National Council Secretary Alicia Strobel. Speaker William Lowe. Here. Galen Cloud. Here. Mary Crawford. Here. Joyce Steer. Present. Patrick Freeman. Here. Andrew Golden. Present. Andrew Gouge. Here. Nelson Harjo. Here. Joseph Hicks. Here. Randall Hicks. Present. Robert Huff. Present. Anna Marshall. Present. Charles McKinney. Here. Thomasini Hola Osborne. Present. Daryl Proctor. Here. Mark Randolph. Present. Speaker, you have 16 present, zero absent. 16 present, zero absent. That constitutes a quorum. Any business conducted this evening will be valid. Next item on the agenda, speaker's report. Speaker's report for today, June 13, this month, J June the 1st on Thursday, several of us attended the College of Muskogee Nation exhibit lecture hall topping out ceremony. It was a fantastic ceremony. Great, great weather. I just appreciate all that attended and appreciate Dr. Randall and his group for what they're doing and the Mask Builders for doing an amazing job. 6-3 Saturday, Miss and Junior Miss Muskogee Nation Scholarship Pageant at the great and beautiful Crystal Theater in Okima, Oklahoma. Fantastic event. I appreciate uh, the princesses that won, Miss Barnett and Miss Harjo, Miss and Junior Miss. Outstanding job. 6-6 six, six, Tuesday, I gave a mound building tour to the Blue Cross Blue Shield executive team that uh, consisted of Miss Lucinda Myers from our election board. They came and they had a meeting with the executive branch and wanted to come and just kind of see not only this building and see how cold it is in here, because they didn't believe me at first, but they were <laughs> believers when they left. So uh, it is cold in here. And for me, they, they had a great meeting with them and wanted to see our area and the court. So they had an outstanding visit. Uh, six, nine Friday, we had the I was, uh, did the welcome at the Eufaula Indian Community Veterans Affairs Resource Fair. Great event. You know, I think most of you know that my daughter Ashlyn is in town from Maryland, just got out of the Army, so it was a really good resource for her. She was able to go in and get registered with not only our VASO, but with those there, and it was really amazing. They had a lot of good attendees, uh, ate about four or five Subway sandwiches, so it was a great time for me. Uh, 610 Saturday, Ninilitka Roadrunner 5K at the Muskogee Nation Dome. We had several attendees. It was raining out, but I uh, want to say uh, congratulations to Pete Kozer for hosting that event in education. They did a phenomenal job. I couldn't believe Galen actually ran the 5K, but he did. I only <laughs> did the mile walk, and I'm still hurting from that. So good job, Galen. Uh, 612 Monday, we had the Muskogee Language Immersion Camp. Welcome. Uh, both chiefs were there, myself, Galen. Really great to see, and it's, I, I had no clue that they would have a citizen from Nebraska and Texas at this, and just amazing to, to meet them young folks, and, and I know they'll build a great rapport with each other while learning our language. Uh, 613 today, Cecil Fair at the River Spirit Casino. Oh, Warren Harjo's doing a great job in CISO. They had a phenomenal group of vendors, so it was good to see all the folks we work with. So uh, great to see that, and that concludes my speaker's report. Uh, second speaker report, second speaker, Robert Huft. I don't have a report this month. Hello, oh, sir. Next item on the agenda is the ex-officio reports. Ex-officio reports will start with MNGE LLC Representative Randall Hicks. Hello, speaker. MNGE met on June 7th, 2023. Report was given by CEO Pat Cross. And it's kind of a short meeting. There was a couple of employee appreciation fund days that were approved. approved. One is Ufala Casino. I believe the date on that was June 28th. 
And then the other was Duck Creek Casino, and that one is in August. I will follow up and submit those dates because they did invite the council out to, to participate. So uh, financials have not been sent out to the council <laughs> due to us our meetings being moved up some. So <clears throat> the next meeting date, scheduled meeting dates, is a special meeting tomorrow, June, or I'm sorry, June 19th, 2023 is a special meeting, and June 21st is a regular regular meeting. And I just wanted to say mado for the passage of the legislation during the emergency session. And that concludes my report, Mado Speaker. Mado Representative Hicks, we greatly appreciate you, sir. MNB Board, Representative Sandra Golden. <clears throat> Thank you, Speaker. Um, I attended two meetings, one regular meeting and one special meeting. Um, they have received their audit with no exceptions and they continue to struggle with space and waiting on their vaccine incentive from ARPA funds. Their next meeting is scheduled for June the 29th at 5 p.m. Thank you. Hello, Representative Golden, College of Muskogee Nation Board of Regents, Representative Anna Marshall. Thank you, Speaker. The College of Muskogee Nation met yesterday at 5.30, June the, Monday, June the 12th. Um, I appreciate all the council members who showed up for the June 1st topping out ceremony on the exhibit hall and the lecture hall. Uh, they continue to work on the Muskogee language revitalization through their language proficiency test and anything that uh, in language development. Uh, they're also continuing discussions with Rosetta Stone as an option for the language, uh, for the language um, program. And, the, and that discussion continues. Uh, the Muskogee Educators Cohorts, they travel to Middlebury Institute of International Studies to complete the project on the Muskogee revitalization of the language. Uh, a grant has been submitted to BIE, so uh, they're moving forward with that. Uh, their audit was conducted by Hogan and Taylor. That was completed with no exceptions. And the Board of Regents voted to change their meeting dates from the second Monday to the third Monday. So the time remains the same at 530. Um, the college is going to participate in the Muskogee Creek Nation Festival. They're going to have an alumni table um, at the festival. They're also going to participate in the parade. And I think they're going to be a part of the golf tournament. And um, so they're going to, their students and faculty is going to be uh, heavily involved in the Muskogee Creek Nation Festival. Uh, the next meeting uh, in July is usually set aside. They don't have a meeting in the month of July. So the next meeting is Monday, August the 21st, 2023 at 5.30 p.m. Mado, speaker. Outstanding, Representative Marshall. Mado to you. Muskogee Loan Fund, Representative Mark Randolph. I'm Mado, speaker. Muskogee Loan Fund met June 5th. Uh, they're offering free training over agricultural and social media marketing as well as agricultural and QuickBooks. Lunch is provided. That'll be through the months of June, July, and August. Next meeting will be July 12th, 2023. Well, Representative Randolph, you know, all of us feel Muskogee Loan Fund is doing an amazing job, so thank you for representing us there, sir. One Fire Board, Representative Patrick Freeman, Jr. But no, Speaker, uh, the uh, one fire board this month will be scheduled on uh, June 20th, so I have no report at this time. Outstanding. Middle Representative Freeman, that concludes our ex-official reports. On to committee reports and announcements. Our first committee, Health, Education, and Welfare, Chairperson, Representative Joyce Deer. Hello, Speaker. The Health, Education, and Welfare Committee met yesterday, Monday, June the 12th at 2 o'clock p.m., and out of committee, the following legislation came out with a due pass. TR 23-059, TR 23-060, TR 23-062, NCA 23-048, NCA 23-052, NCA 23-053, and NCA 23-059. Uh, we have no, we do have other items for consideration. Prior to this planning committee tonight, the joint committees of HEW and LNC met. And I would like to request um, those items, which are TR 23-052, 064, 066, 
and NCA 23-045, 063, 065, and 066 be added to the agenda in numerical order. And our next scheduled meeting is um, Wednesday, July the 19th at 2 o'clock p.m. I have no other announcements. No, Representative Deer, those items you mentioned will be added to Saturday's agenda in numerical order. Next committee, Land, Natural Resources, and Cultural Preservation, Chairman Representative Darrell Proctor. Thank you, Speaker. Land, Natural Resources, Cultural Preservation Committee met last night, June 12, 2023, and at a committee with a due pass, we have TR 23-054. TR 23-067, NCA 23-050, and NCA 23-051. Uh, we have no other items for consideration. Next scheduled committee date would be July 11, 2023 at 6.30 p.m. No other announcements. Thank you. Well, Representative Proctor, next committee, Business, Finance, and Justice, <laughs> Chairperson, Representative Thomasine Yehola Osborne. Thank you, Speaker. The Business, Finance, and Justice Committee met on Thursday, June the 8th at 3 p.m. The following came out of committee with a due pass, NCR 23-001 and 002, TR 23-065, NCA 23-036 and 060 and 062. Uh, the BF and J, or items for consideration, the Business, Finance, and Justice Committee along with the Land, Natural, Resource, and Cultural Preservation met prior to planning, and the following came out of committee with a due pass. ER 23-063 and NCA 23-049. And I respectfully ask that they be added to the agenda in numerical order. Uh, we have no other, our scheduled committee date, July 20th at 3 p.m. And I have no other announcements at this time. Well, Representative Yehola Osborne, those items that passed tonight will be added in numerical order to Saturday's agenda. Uh, Council Representative, this concludes our committee reports. On to other business. Uh, tonight we have in other business, we have the uh, Sovereign Artificial Intelligence presentation, and uh, I'd like to introduce Ms. Sarai Cook, who is a Muskogee citizen. Sarai, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am, we can. And I will say the floor is yours. Do you need access to our, you're able to do that to get on Zoom if you have any presentations or if not, you can just, the floor is yours. Can you, can you see my presentation? Yes, ma'am, we can. Okay. Before I start, I'll just, uh, my name is Sarai Cook. Uh, good evening, speaker. And Good evening to the rest of the council representatives. Thank you for having me here tonight. It was really wonderful to hear the prayers and, the, and our language. And just, I really appreciate you having me here to talk about sovereign AI and artificial intelligence in general. So just to give you a little bit of background on how this came about and how I started to learn about this technology. Um, this technology was released to the public last November of 2022, and right around that time, I started to use this technology. The first time I saw it, I was like, wow, this is amazing. This could be used for so many things. So I really dug in and started to learn a lot about it, took some Google courses, and just started to use it in my everyday life. And I thought other people were using it too. And then I went to the Native American Finance Officers Association a few months ago, and I was asking a lot of the tribal leaders there if they had heard about ChatGPT and artificial intelligence, and it, nobody had heard about it. And so I decided to start the business Sovereign AI, which is, it trains, we train people how to use um, artificial intelligence and specifically chat GPT to use it in everyday, their everyday lives. So that's just a little bit of background. I'll go to my presentation. So this is titled AI in Everyday Life, the smart technologies we already use. I think this is a very uh, controversial subject and it's a very controversial topic. 
And I think there's a lot of people that have misinformation about this technology. We've been using, actually been using this technology for a long time. It just hasn't been uh, available to the public, but Google's been using it. Siri uses it. All these technologies use it. Um, so when you're, um, when you're texting on your phone, I don't know if you can remember back to when we started to use, it's called predictive texting. So when you're on your cell phone and it, it's annoying when, when you try to write something and it comes out the wrong way because it's predicting what you're going to say. And that's similar to what this technology is. You just put in a small prompt and then it predicts what you want to say and it, and it writes it for you. So predictive texting, like we already use on our telephones, on our cell phones, is an example of AI technology that we're already using, and we've been using it for years. Also, if you use Google Maps that has predictive um, AI on it, Siri, Alexa, uh, Google has its own AI similar to ChatGPT, but it's called BARD. All of the major... Uh, websites and search engines are actually using um, AI technology right now, but just not a lot of people know that. So if you ever, um, if you've ever been thinking of something that you wanted to buy or talking about it, and then you wonder why it comes up on your Google or why it comes up on Amazon, that's because that's this technology. And I was really, I was wondering how it did that. I was like, I didn't even say that. It just, it just showed up on my Amazon because it was predicting what I wanted based on what I had looked at. Um, let's see. So social media also, also uses this technology. So this is, to me, this is the biggest leap forward in technology since the advent of the internet. In 1995, the internet was made available to the public. And then um, 1998, the first website browser um, was available to the public. 2000 was the first free software that was uh, released to the public. 2005, the first free online services were launched. 2010, we started saving to the cloud. And so that's the cloud computing. And then now November of 2022 is when they came out with this um, chat GPT. And I think this is even actually might even be bigger than the internet. And what it is, is a large language model. So what's a large language model? Well, they've been taking basically data from all over the internet and, and teaching chat GPT and uh, training it with all that data from various websites. And so now it can predict what we want based on the input that we put into it. So, this is ChatGPT is available for free to the public. It's just that not, not a lot of people are using it yet, but they I, I suspect they'll be using it in mass. Like everybody will start using it within the next year or two. Um, so what Sovereign AI does is teach, teach people how to use it responsibly and safely. It's a powerful tool, but it's also important to remember that it's not perfect. So it's not human, so it can't really discern uh, between what's right and what's wrong. So if you put the wrong inputs into it, it might give you the, the wrong outputs. So it's important to know like how to prompt it, how to use it. Also, I already, I've already i made the mistake of believing what it, the output was, so you, you have to go over what it gives you and make sure that it's correct. So I really believe that especially with tribal governments, it's important to um, teach everybody about what you should and shouldn't put in it, like not putting any proprietary information, uh, not putting uh, like people's personal information in there because anybody can use it, it's free to use. So anybody could just start using it. And if they don't have the proper training, they might put the wrong stuff in there. Uh, there's, I would say there's thousands of use cases, you know, things that we could use this for. Uh, for, for example, like budgets and financial um, stuff and grants, and you can do math on it. You can write letters, all kinds of stuff. 
Uh, so that was just a general overview. Now I'll just give you a demonstration. So can I just yes. get it? Yeah, sure. Uh, SJ uh, speaker and council, my name is Isabel Coronado and I'm the president of Sovereign AI. Um, and I also just wanted before we think of use cases, um, the, I, I, my full time job, I'm a researcher with New York University and even the researchers at New York University were using and utilizing ChatGPT right now. Um, we just wrote a grant and it helped us with our grant writing process. Um, well, you know, we get the grant to see if it's successful, but um, the, uh, uh, universities are using this, um, governments using this, um, and, it, and it's become a really useful tool in the workplace in writing grants, letters, follow-up emails, and so much more. And I wanted to come here. Actually, I'm not, I don't want to sell you anything. I don't want to sell you even on this. It's just to give you information to, because I think there's a lot of misinformation out there and probably a, a lot of people that are saying not to use it. And I just think that you know, everybody has their own agendas, but I really see this as a sovereignty tool. And like the, like our tagline says, putting the power back in the hands of the people. Mm -hmm. um, it, I think it's a good training tool. It's, it's good for so many things that, and it really does put the hands back into the power of the people. It can help um, lift people up and teach them skills that they might not have had because maybe they didn't go to college or, you know, maybe they're, um, worried about their skills and they can learn things really easily through this. I, all the time, if I don't know something, I go to it and I say, hey, explain this to me like I'm a ninth grader. And then it explains it and lays out the process and really easily. So I've been able to learn all kinds of stuff from, um, from chat GPT since I started using it. So just this is the website. So it's free, but if you sign up, uh, you just pay $20 a month and then you get the upgraded version. So on the upgraded version, so in uh, ChatGPT, the older model, it was trained up until 2021. So it doesn't have current information, but if you pay $20 and you get the upgraded version, then you it has access to the web and the internet. Um, so this is just to show you if you go here and then you go to the settings, uh, you can do beta features, data control. Here you can uh, turn off the chat history. And so that helps with security like that. And so none of the chat history goes into the training model. And I just did a few scenarios right here to show you. Copy. So the first one is act as a legislator and act as a legislator and tribal resolution and draft me. Okay, act as a legislator and draft me a tribal resolution. Oh no, act Act as a legislator. A tribal resolution, sorry. A tribal, a tribal resolution has been presented to me to execute a contract for a housing builder to build a large building. What questions should I ask to make sure this is a good deal for the nation? And I'm sure you guys already know um, the questions to ask, but it just kind of refreshes and gives you more ideas. So here it said cost and budget. What's the total cost? Are there any potential additional expenses or hidden costs? How will the project be funded? Will it impact the nation's budget or require external financing? Builders, the builder's qualifications and expertise. What's the builder's track record? Have they successfully completed projects or on of a similar scale? Are there any references to testimonials from previous clients, the project timeline, design and specifications, quality assurance, and community impact, mm -hmm. environmental considerations, contract terms and conditions, risk assessment. So it gives just the overall general idea. And then you can actually dig in on, on each one of those topics. Um, I like, I could do this. I'm going to copy. So risk assessment, what are the potential risks 
associated with the project and how will they be mitigated? Um, expand on this topic and find out more. Yes. You don't even have to spell things right. It, it just does it for you. Now that's giving more risks like market risks, stakeholder and community risks, mm -hmm. regulatory and legal risks, environmental risks. So it's pretty detail oriented. It can also make, um, like here, act as a department manager and put together a staffing plan and a budget for a new department that wants to add a food program to feed 100 people a month. Let me know exactly what I will need. Okay, I'm gonna say, make me a detailed budget in a table. Cost this budget out for the 100. So I feel like um, with this kind of work, you need specialized training, mm -hmm. but now you don't necessarily, you, you need to be able to understand what it's giving you and then to check it, but you don't, it saves time and you don't need any specialized training really to do these things that were once like really hard to do. And I think a lot of people are going to be scared, oh, that they're going to lose their jobs. But actually, I really see this as it depends on how people use it. You could use it to replace people or you could use it to create way more jobs. And I, I, I foresee the leadership of the nation and the National Council using this tool to create a lot more jobs and not to take away jobs because I know we care about our people. And, um, and I think that's one thing that as this gets more widespread, people are going to be concerned about. And um, so just putting that out there. So if anybody has any questions or anything that you want me to show you on this, and I'm also happy to come back anytime and uh, and do some more demonstration for you or ask or answer any questions. Thank you, Sarai. We greatly appreciate it. You know, one thing I was at that actual Harvard con uh, Weeks convention when she met with several of us, I had no idea about this. And when she was mentioning it and showed some presentations like this, I thought it was phenomenal for the fact that, you know, you have to be educated and know how to ask those kinds of questions. And, and one thing that I appreciate Sarai is she, she is a consultant in this. And, you know, for me, I thought I knew all the housing questions to ask, but I do not because of what she just pulled up. But um, for me, I could see us moving in the future, you know, and I know it's up to the Council on Internal Affairs, but working with Sovereign AI just to see how they can consult us in this moving forward. Because, you know, one thing I would love to move forward on is taxation for the tribe and reservation taxes. So I would have loved to see that presentation, but that's, you know, coming soon. We'll, we'll do that in the future. Does anybody have any questions? comments, concerns. My Representative Randolph. 
Oh, just waving at it. Okay, great, outstanding. You know, one thing I would have loved to seen is a Loop Square liquor sales. Let's let's ask that. And no, I'm just kidding, just kidding, Trent. I <laughs> just wanted to say that in jest, but appreciate that what we have coming up. But you know, that's not far from the truth in this in what we're seeing in this software. Uh, Sarai, Isabel, do y'all have any other comments for us? I think, yeah, just what I've saw, what I've saw here tonight with the plans that you're asking from people, <clears throat> you can copy and paste that into this um, this software and it and you can ask it questions and it will give you answers like, is this a good deal? Is this how much we should be charging? Uh, you know, what's a better deal? How do I write, how would I rewrite this to achieve this outcome and things like that? Um, also, I, yeah, I would love to uh, work with you on the tax. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I would also add uh, what I also use AI for meetings is mm. there's software out there that will take, listen to the meeting and take notes on its own. So then you just cycle through the notes and you Super. don't have to write them up after the meeting. Um, and it, it even gives you themes and you can break them down um, even further. But Isabel, can you tell them a little bit about your challenge when you were first starting and why you had to get over this hump of learning before you could really actually use it? Because there, it's going to be really hard for people to start without like a one-on-one -on -one hands-on tutorials because it, it takes, it sometimes, uh, it takes a while to understand it. So Isabel, mm -hmm. do you want to say a little bit about that? Yeah, just with any new technology, it takes a minute to understand it and incorporate it into your life. And, uh, you know, you know, when Instagram and Facebook come it came around, why are there so many different social medias? And it just t takes a minute to get into it. Um, and I, that's the same that happened with me with AI. I just didn't see the need for it. Um, I was, I've been going about my work for years now. Why do I need it? But then I started incorporating like the meeting notes and like, oh man, it doesn't take me 30 minutes after I just had a meeting to write up the notes and send them to my colleagues. It does it in five minutes for me. Um, and then, like I said, with the, with the grant stuff, even my own boss is using ChatGPT to help with our grant writing. And that's something she did on her own. And then we started talking about, um, you know, using them more to write more grants for our department. Um, and so it's just getting over that hump of understanding all the different, there's several different types. We just talked about chat GPT, but there's so many different um, types. And even um, people are using it for language revitalization um, and using it to incorporate, um, bringing back language and chat GPT is getting a little bit better about language. It depends on the tribe, um, but th there's just so many uses. Outstanding. Uh, we have a question from second not, speaker, not, Robert Huff. Not a question, just a comment. My daughter works for the mayor of L.A. in California, and she's, they use AI all the time, and she's amazing what it can do for you, but it's also on, also on the scary side, too. But she said, you know, it, it makes your job so much easier, like I said, working for the, the mayor of L.A. There's a lot of uh, writing, different things to do, and she's, AI is amazing what it can do for you. That's all I want to say. Yes, sir. Thank you. Well said. Any other comments, questions, concerns? Anything at all? Hearing none, I will say, Sarai, Isabel, thank you so much for not only, it was great to see you all out there at Phoenix at the Muskogee Outreach, so thank you all for being there. Uh, I greatly appreciate your information on your company, Sovereign AI. I look forward to us uh, possibly having a call with you and, and maybe moving forward to do some consultation with you all moving forward. Uh, one last time, any comments, questions? All right, ladies, do you all have any final comments? No, just thank you so much for having us. Yes, ma'am. Thank you yeah, so much. We greatly appreciate you and opening our eyes to this technology. Maru. Maru. All right. That concludes our Sovereign AI presentation. And we're still in other business. Do we have any other business representatives? Speaker. Yes, sir. I'd like to make a motion to go into executive session. Representative Joseph Hicks makes a motion to go into executive session. Second by second speaker, Robert Huft. Do you have any discussion? No discussion, voice vote. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed, same sign. Hearing none opposed, we will go into executive session at 7.29 p.m. Representative Hicks, who would you like to stay in here? Uh, Mr. Haskins, uh, council, and our staff. Okay. Thank you, thank you, folks. Okay, we are out of executive session. I feel we only have Representative Freeman online. Uh, other business, do we have any other business? My request to you all would be 
please answer the Wichita uh, outreach email. If you're going to make it, if not, please let us know. That way we have 16 answers and we're good to go. Any other business? Speaker. Yes. Is Mr. Howard, was he here for something? Mr. Howard is here. We're going to visit with him about some ambulance options moving forward. So we're going to, he can come in if he wants, but he's going to meet with some representatives. Come on in, Bobby. Oh, fire trucks, not ambulances. Sorry about that. I knew they were safety vehicles. This whole discussion's got me pretty wound up, but so no other business announcements. Do we have any announcements? Representative Golden. Youth camps are all sports camps. We've had uh, four, uh, 230 kids. So far, we have four left. Bristow, Thursday, Okmulgee, Friday. The 22nd is Walika, and the 30th is Kellyville. Standing. Thank you, ma'am. Well done. Well done. Any other announcements? Representative Hicks. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, since Mr. Howard is in here, I just want to give him a shout out. Uh, I know Busky ceremonial grant, uh, dance last weekend, and like at the last minute, I'm sure everybody gets calls. I need this. I need that. And just one phone call to Mr. Howard, and he made it happen. So I just want to say I appreciate him for Yes, sir. It. Appreciate you, Mr. Howard. Always Good there. Job. Always there, willing to help. Right, right. Well done, well done. We appreciate you, sir, and all you do. Final call for announcements. Hearing no announcements, adjournment. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Second. Motion made by second speaker Robert Huff, seconded by Representative Charles Son McHenry. <laughs> Any discussion? No discussion on the adjournment. I would ask Representative Thomas, excuse me. Can we get a voice vote? All in favor, say aye. aye. Any opposed, same sign. Hearing none opposed, I would like to ask Representative Thomasine Yahola Osborne for our benediction, which will serve as our adjournment. Father, I just thank you for this day, and I thank you for this opportunity that you've given us. And Father, the, you've laid something at our feet that we need to be praying about. Father, I just pray for direction and guidance throughout this process. And Father, I'm just asking favor over our nation and over every person that is involved in, in these talks. Father, you've, you've given us so much. And Father, we've been, we've been faithful, I believe, and we've been generous. But Father, I just ask you again that you find favor over our nation. And Father, um, I just pray for traveling grace, Father, for everyone that is leaving uh, this auditorium here shortly. And uh, again, just guide and direct us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Mado, Representative Yehola Osborne, we are adjourned at 8.22 p.m. Mado.